What's going on guys? Play by Play Gaming here back with another Epic 7 video and today we're talking about friendship farming in Epic 7, how to get to level 10 friendship as fast as possible. So we're going to be talking about friendship and potentially the best ways that you can farm friendship in Epic 7. So uh, let's take a look real quick at Shermia here. So if you are farming in Epic 7, eventually you'll reach level 10 with your units. So don't mind her gear, don't mind her stats. That's not why we're here. We're here for her friendship level 10. And right now she's at friendship level nine. And my goal is to get her to friendship level 10 so that we can get three of these heart skill points. And what you'll be able to do with those skill points is actually use them to feed into her skill enhancements and her skill enhancements actually make her stronger, make her skill stronger. But three of those skill points, which are your little hearts here, uh, equate to three Molagora. So you'll be able to use those skill points anywhere that you have the ability to uh, pretty much level up her skill enhance here. So instead of using Molagora, which can be pretty rare in the game, or you can definitely run out fairly fast if you're brand new, you have a lot of heroes that you need to level up and you don't have a big enough stash, level 10 friendship is where it's at. So that's why it's really important to hit level 10 with units that you really want to build up and for units that you might consider using in the future just so that you can save those three Molagora. So not only does that skill enhancement apply with those skill points, but you also get additional expressions uh, that you can kind of just switch around. And of course, uh, this is probably her best expression there. And uh, you'll get uh, a couple of these as you reach level 10 friendship. Once you hit level 10, you get to unlock her best expression or whatever the special three is you also get access to voice lines that you don't get unless you hit a certain level of friendship with that unit so just kind of keep that in mind it also gives you kind of just that little bit of extra in the game all right all right we're going to start it off with the number one fastest way to get to level 10 in Epic 7. And this is actually fairly new and it's something that we've been wanting and they kind of gave us a little bit of it and that's gonna be in the side story of that week or of those two weeks. What, whatever the side story is, in every new side story that we get in the exchange shop, we're gonna have these gifts that you can give to any hero that belongs to that element so for example this side story is melissa she is a fire hero so you can give this gift to any fire elemental units to increase their friendship so let's take a look at what that looks like here all right so we're looking at shermie again we're going to give her that gift and see how much we increase her friendship by so we actually have 20 of those uh, gifts that we can give her because we got 10 from the Ilanov story and then we got 10 from the Melissa one. So we've been kind of saving these. If I push those all the way in from nine all the way till 10, that'll get me to her level 10 friendship instantly. And I don't have to spend time farming side story or farming wherever I'm farming to increase her friendship. So I get those molas or those skill points, which I can use right away. Now, keep in mind that it does take quite a bit to farm for friendship. And so I'll put the scale on the screen here. Okay, here's the scale. So in order to reach from a level one friendship all the way to level 10, it's going to take you 1500 runs to reach level 10 friendship with any unit. So essentially what these gifts are doing is pretty much pushing you up to a certain point and getting you that exchange for the amount of runs so we're going to take a look at how many that is here and then we'll, we'll talk about how much you're actually saving by using those friendship uh, gifts so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at namuna she's at level one friendship and we're going to feed her 10 of those and that takes her from level one friendship all the way to level six friendship and we'll put up the scale here one more time so you can see so that essentially saves us 
300 runs. So to take her from level one all the way to level six, it's gonna cost me 300 runs of any area that gives me friendship. And what I'll do in a little bit is I'll run through a quick list of all the areas that you can get friendship in Epic Seven, if that helps. So that 300 runs equals, if I'm running, let's say for example, adventure, I'm running stages for adventure, it's gonna take 2,400 energy just to hit level six. So keep that in mind. In order to get all 1,500 runs, let's say I just run nothing but adventure, let's say I run an eight energy stage adventure, it's gonna take me 12,000 energy in order to hit friendship level 10. So what would happen if I fed her all 20? So let's take a look at that. So if I fed her all 20, it takes her from one all the way to seven. So that essentially is giving me another 200 runs for this particular unit. And I would say it's not as worth to spend a ton of these on getting one unit to level seven, when instead I can use only 10 for, like for example, we'll use 10 here for Namunas, and then we'll come back out of here, 10. So if I'm saving these in order to get the most bang out of everything that I'm using for friendship, and now I have two units at level six friendship instead of one unit at level seven friendship. So I highly recommend that you split these up. I would say use 10 on each of the element units that you want to push up to level 10. And this at least pushes you up 300 runs that you don't have to complete on your way to friendship level 10. All right, so the list of all the areas we kind of talked about already, you have adventure, you have hunts, you have spirit altar, and you have arena. So these four areas, if you want to maximize your friendship, making sure that you're getting friendship every single time that you run these, it's really important that you try your best to stick with one friendship farming team. So for example here, I have this farm and friends team. And each of these units is almost at level 10 friendship, maybe except for Fighter Maya, but I'm working on friendship level 10 for all of these. So that means that when I'm farming adventure, I'm gonna take the farm and friends team. When I'm running spirit altar on buff events or any other time I run, I run spirit altar, I'm gonna run farm and friends. When I'm running NPC challenges in arena, now this one, is I would say a little bit more difficult if you are newer to the game. So you might not be able to clear everything with units that you're leveling for friendship, just in case you put whatever gear on them. Uh, but what I run is if my farm and friends team isn't strong enough to clear whatever stage that is, let's say it's the NPC arena team, then I throw in my farming unit. Here I have RB, which helps me just farm friendship points. So anytime my farm and friends isn't strong enough, I sub one of those units for my farmer and whoever your farmer is. So just keep in mind that completing your NPC challenges every day actually gives you friendship points that a lot of people don't necessarily go through and actually do. It also gives you sky stones that you can use for all different areas of the game. All right, next up is gonna be Labyrinth. The Labyrinth, you're probably gonna be doing it when you're first starting off, maybe if you're a returning player, three to four times a week, I would say. And these, you actually can take advantage of the fact that you earn friendship points in these. So if you are to bring whatever your, your strongest units are, you're gonna be farming friendship. But if you already have your strongest units that are maxed at friendship level 10, it doesn't hurt to bring in units that aren't fully friendship level 10 so that you can give them that extra bit of friendship. Now, you might not be able to run your farm and friends team in raid uh, in Labyrinth just because of the morale and how all that works. But if you can slot in at least one of these units into your normal lab or raid comp, all of that is going to help and add just a little bit more runs to get your unit to friendship level 10. Next up, we have Guild War. Guild War, you're doing at least 
three times a week. Every time that you do your Guild War, you're doing it three times a week. And uh, every time that you do your attack, and whether you win or you lose, you actually gain friendship points. And not only do you gain friendship points, but by doing your attacks, you also earn Mystic Medals. So at the, at the end, you get a chance of getting some Mystic Medals, which overall is going to improve your game experience. All right, and last but not least, you have the Automaton Tower. And this one, a lot of people don't bother doing, but I still do. Now this might be something that newer players might not necessarily be able to do, but maybe it's something that you can work towards. Always try to bring in units that are either your strongest units that are lacking friendship or bring your strongest units plus one friendship unit. And so what I like to do here, for example, uh, I recently got Flan up to level 10 friendship, but I brought SSB, Landy, Tamarin, and then I usually slot my one friendship unit here. So the next time that the Automaton Tower comes around, I'm gonna slot in my highest friendship unit. So if Sermia is still on friendship level nine, I'll pop her in there and run all 25 stages with Sermia, even if she dies, I'll just use some stigma, keep going, and I'll keep going until everyone dies, or I know I just can't get past that stage, and then I'll swap her out and then put in another strong unit just so that I can clear all the way to level 25. But those are just additional ways that you can earn friendship since you're already gonna do the auto tower. All right, here we go. Last but not least is going to be stage three one in episode one. Now this one, it, there is a big disclaimer to this one, so I did want to add a bit of pros and cons to this. So just keep that in mind. This is one of the ways that people used to farm friendship points on the, at the early stages of Epic 7. So you'll find this stage at, I believe, Episode 1, 2S, and that's going to be 3-1 Levelin Harbor. And the, uh, the thing about this stage is that it costs only two energy to run, and it gives you friendship points. So you're essentially cutting down on the amount of energy that you're needing to use in order to farm for friendship. But I, so I don't recommend that you run this just because of the way that the Penguin EXP works now. So you're not really maximizing the Penguin EXP. There's also no auto to this. So what you have to do is pretty much jump to each of the portals, clear out the entire team once you clear them out. And they're not too difficult to clear out since they're only level 16, uh, but you do have to run through this manually. And if you're not strong enough to clear the fodder, it's gonna take a little while, right? So what you might want to do is uh, turn off all the skills your people are gonna go first, more than likely. Uh, but as you see here, it does take a little bit to kind of run through these and teleport to each stage. But it's cost two energy, you do get catalysts, you do get charms that you can use, and then you get that uh, equipment. So once you reach the end, you hit clear, you'll go through the portal, and you'll actually earn friendship points and a penguin exp now but as you can see i got a little charm and some gear that i can sell but again i don't recommend this way because it is going to take a lot more manual work in order to run all of those stages however if you end up doing this it will surprisingly only take you 3000 energy to hit level 10 from level one compared to if I were to run an eight energy stage uh, for those 1500 runs, which would pretty much take me 12,000 energy to run. So in the end, is this better to farm for friendship only purposes? Yes, but you're missing out on all the XP that you're getting from, from farming higher difficulty stages. And I think in the end, it's not really worth it. I think it's like three times the effort uh, for what you're getting in return. If your goal is only to farm friendship, then you can definitely do that. But just to give you a little bit more perspective, uh, that uh, 12,000 energy uh, that you're using actually equates to about 
6,000 Skystone. So for 1,500 runs, and I'll put that on the screen again, that 1,500 runs that you see there is actually costing you 6,000 Skystones. And that's saying that you're running uh, eight energy adventure stages. As opposed to farming 3-1 for friendship, it's going to take you 3,000 energy, which equates to about 1,500 Skystone. So it's, it's a pretty big difference, but again, I would say only farm this if you have a lot of time on your hands and you really don't care about manualing each of those. Uh, now, the, fa the stronger your units are, the faster you're gonna get through it. And you do have the opportunity to get charms, that gear that you can sell, but you're really not maximizing the amount of penguin uh, EXP that you're getting. So it's, it's one of those things to really, really, really take into consideration. But that's going to be the end of the video. Let me know your thoughts about friendship farming. What are your go-to ways to farm for friendship? Are you more of an adventure person? Are you more of a Guild Wars person? I personally like to bring all my units everywhere so that I can maximize the amount of runs that I'm doing in order to get level 10. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the comment section below. If there's anything else that you might want to see a video on, let me know in the comment section below. Like always, if you happen to enjoy the video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hey, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like content like this. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.